Hey, what's going on everyone? This is Beck Brace and welcome to a quick introduction to GraphQL. I'm also going to show you how to combine fast API operations with GraphQL on the same application. But first of all, let's check out what is GraphQL all about. GraphQL is an abbreviation for Graph Query Language. So it's a query language for reading data from API. Unlike most query languages like SQL, you don't use GraphQL to query a particular type of data store, such as Postgres or MySQL database, for example. Instead, you use GraphQL to query data from any number of different sources. In traditional REST API, you consume APIs using REST. And we have done that so many times with Flask, Django, and FastAPI by sending different HTTP request methods like get, post, put, and delete to the API using URLs for the path. Now, the problem with HTTP request is that when the request is received from the front end user, the API responds with everything that it has a full payload that contains data that might not be useful to you as a developer. The other problem is the complete opposite, which means that you might want to fetch multiple data or get multiple resources simultaneously. So this is not possible because there is no enough data per HTTP request. And there comes the power of GraphQL. GraphQL solved this problem by improving upon the idea of receiving a bulk of unnecessary data or fetching less than expected. So instead of these request URLs or many endpoints for HTTP methods, GraphQL has a single entry point. So you can query data now very easily by specifying what type of data exactly you're looking for. And the response you will get will exactly match your query in JSON format, of course. So you can see here on the left side, we are querying the food for that penguin called Mill. And on the right side, you have your query resolved you get your exact data that you're looking for. The penguin's food is fish. And that's all. No more, no less. GraphQL is language agnostic, which means that it's supported by a lot of languages. And I want to mention here that GraphQL is not an implementation, but rather a communication pattern or a specification, if you will. So in order to put GraphQL to action, we will need some services and tools to help us doing that. And this is the official website for GraphQL. If you will take a look here below, you will find that the language support for GraphQL is huge. Okay, JavaScript, Go, PHP, C Sharp, Python. So let's talk a little bit about data structure in GraphQL. The way this works is by start defining a schema with objects using type keywords. So animal is an object type or type for short which means it's a type with some fields. ID, number, name, food, and home, these are the fields for that animal type. And most of the types in your schema will be object types. Also, one very important thing to remember is that the ID, the number, name, food, and home, all of these are fields that can appear in any part of a GraphQL query that operates on that animal type. And you notice here the ID field is followed by a bang or exclamation mark, which means non-nullable. This is like in SQL when you put a constraint, not null. And that simply means that this field should never be empty. And whenever you query this field, you will get a value for it. You can have different data types like integers, you can have floats, strings, booleans, and so on. And home field has an array of Antarctica objects, which is also non-nullable. And this is a reference or connection to other types. So you have type Antarctica with home and weather fields. So you can query animal with Antarctica together because it's connected to the animal type. Now let's talk a little bit about arguments. So as far as arguments, each type can have zero or more arguments. Again, you can see here that the ID is non nullable name, which is shark, which is a simple string, also non nullable. And here in the length field, we have arguments. So arguments are either required or optional. So if this unit argument here is not passed, it will be set to meter by default, for example. Also, there are two types that are special within a schema, query and mutation. So every GraphQL service has a query type and may or may not have a mutation type. These types are the same as a regular object type, okay? But there are special because well, they define the entry point of every GraphQL query. And this code is from the GraphQL website. So we are querying the name of the hero. 
And we're also querying the name of the droid with the ID, which is equal to 2000. And the response to our query is as follows. So data received in JSON format, hero with the name of BB-8, and the droid's name is C-3PO. And this means that GraphQL service needs to have a query hero and droid field. So let's take a look to the schema. So type keyword followed by the name of that object type. And we have two fields, hero and droid. Hero has an input or parameter of episode, which is set to whatever episode that we want to define in our query. And this hero is set to BB-8. And similarly for droid, with the ID as parameter is set to whatever ID that we can set in our query like we did here. We have ID here, which is equal to 2000. All right, so it's the same thing. And this droid is set to C3PO. So this is the query. And mutation also works in the similar way. You define fields on the mutation type as the root mutation fields that you can call in your query. So these are root query fields and these are root mutation fields. All right, so that's about it. That was a quick introduction to GraphQL about data structures, about arguments, about queries and mutations, how the query looks like, how the data received looks like. Um, let me just show you very quickly um, the website. So you see here, describe your data with the type or the object type project. You have name, tagline, contributors with an array of user type. So again, this user will be defined below with the keyword type and it will have a whole bunch of data stored in it and we can retrieve whatever data that we want using our simple query. And again, if you want to query for, let's say the name, for example, for that uh, object type project, you can do this very simply by typing project and you specify the name, which is GraphQL and we want the tagline. So the response that you're getting is the tagline, a query language for APIs. So this is basically your query and this is your response. And this is how you can describe your data or structuring your schema. You can get many resources in a single request. So this is the request to the server. And you can see here multiple fields, okay, multiple resources. Describe what's possible with the type system. And this is what we said that um, the GraphQL APIs are organized in terms of types and fields and not endpoints, which is the REST API case. Access the full capabilities of your data from a single endpoint. Move faster with powerful developer tools. And I'm going to show you GraphIQL when we're going to work with the fast API code. Um, I also forgot to mention that GraphQL was created at Facebook in 2012 and it was open sourced in 2015. So who is using GraphQL? Facebook, obviously, GitHub, Pinterest, Shopify, Coursera. You can take a look to the whole list. All right, perfect. The last thing that I would like to show you in the code section, uh, there are tools for, as we said, for a lot of languages. So for example, the Apollo server is the most famous package for GraphQL, uh, for JavaScript. And we have also Apollo client, but we're actually interested in Python. So let's click on Python. So Graphene is the most well-known library for building GraphQL APIs, okay, on the server side, obviously. And on the client, we have GQL, we have Python GraphQL client. For the server also you have, um, I don't know how to pronounce this, Ariadne, 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 I don't know. And currently I'm preparing a project for you guys with GraphQL and Flask, and we're going to work with Ariadne on the server side. All right, that's about it. Now let's go ahead and type some fast API code. So now I'm inside my Visual Studio code. I have a file called main.py and we're going to use GraphQL to fetch data from fast API. And we could use something like strawberry or Ariadne, like I showed you on the website, but Starlet. And when I say Starlet, I implicitly mean fast API. So Starlet includes optional support for GraphQL using the Graphne library. So before we do anything, let's go ahead and open our integrated terminal and let's install fast API and Graphene.
So Graphene is a library for building GraphQL APIs in Python very easily. And like I showed you, it's a server library and its main goal is to provide a simple but extendable API for making your life easier. All right, great. Let's close now the integrated terminal and let's go ahead and start by importing Graphene. I also want to import fast API. And last but not least, we want to import the GraphQL app from Starlet. And don't worry, Starlet is already included in Fast API, so you don't need to install it independently. GraphQL app. All right, now let's create a class. I will call it query. And this takes graphene.object type. And let's have a hello variable, which will be equal to graphene and I want to convert what will come next to a string so the name will be equal to graphene also dot let's just make this a bit smaller for you guys to see better also dot string and we can leave it empty like that the idea is when you will type your name you will get a response hello and your name in the graph IQL tool and I will show you that in a few seconds. But we can also have a default value. So the default value in this case will be equal to world. And the last step, we will need a function and this function to resolve the query. So we'll call it resolve hello. And it takes self, it takes info and name. Info in this case is not useful, but if we will omit it, we will have an error. Okay, uh, we will get an error of not sufficient arguments. So we will just keep it like that. And I want to return hello in a string plus name. Okay, whatever name you will pass, it will be concatenated with hello. And that's all. Now I want to instantiate a fast API application. So fast API. And I will take my application and I will use a method called add underscore route. This way, I want to add a route in Starlet, which is inherited by FastAPI, without declaring the specific operations like get, post, and so on. So whatever will come next, so let's just have a path. So whatever will come next will be handled by the GraphQL app. And here, the schema will be equal to graphene dot schema. Uh, schema with capital S and the query is equal to the query class. Okay, so query is equal to a query. Now, when we will load up the page in the browser, we will be served the GraphIQL tool, uh, which you can use to interact with the GraphQL API, like I said before. So let's take a look to that. Let's open the terminal and run our fast API server by saying uvicorn main app dash dash load in order to reflect any changes that we might have in our code without interrupting the server. All right, perfect. So let's go ahead and open the browser. And there you go, graph IQL. So don't forget that this is the query and here is the function to resolve that query. So in order to write our query, simply we will open curly braces and we will type hello. You can type just hello. And if we will leave it like that, we will get hello world as a default value if we will not specify a name. So let's try that out. And there you go, hello world. If we'll pass a name and we'll run our query again, we'll get hello back brace. All right, so this was a very quick introduction about GraphQL. I hope now that you have at least the basic understanding of what GraphQL is. If you like this video, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Don't forget the notification bell to get a notification for future videos. And that will be all for today. Until next time, stay safe and be well.